inside the media coaching call with David Meltzer. I'm your host, Sean Walchef. This is Digital Hospitality, and this is probably my favorite series that we do because I was this morning going back through the first time that I got to interview Dave, which came off of Super Bowl 54. So 2020 was coming off of Super Bowl 54. It is now on the eve of Super Bowl 58. And I was going back through specifically your YouTube content because it was one YouTube video um, that took me down the the David Meltzer storytelling mind of Meltzer, who you are, your essence, your frequency that led me to realize I got to find a way to work with Dave. Um, I got to get him on my show, Digital Hospitality. I got to find a way for him to help me with what we now call the stage theory. And uh, Dave, I want to thank you because most people think when I talk about turning a barbecue business into a media business, they laugh. Less people are laughing now, but especially back in 2020, especially 2017, when we first launched our show, 2019, when I got the URL, calibbq.media, um, people were laughing, but now people aren't laughing. We have huge brand deals in the restaurant technology space, and we're doing so many cool things that I think looking back at when I first met you, you had the belief in me because I think you had the belief in yourself. Knowing what you know and knowing what you've done, so many of the people that I interact with when I tell them you need to start a show, you need to create long form content, you need to talk about your essence, you need to build in public. So many of them are go, what's the ROI? What's the ROI of me creating a show? You and I are different. We are willing to persist. We are willing to lean into our truth. Can you share with the audience back in the early days when you didn't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube, when you didn't have millions of people showing up to your Friday trainings, when you gave keynote speeches to two people in the audience, can you share with the audience where was the where where was the persistence? Because I'm sure there were people in your circle that laughed at you, scoffed at you. Um, where where was the where was the the essence? Well, number one, understanding linear time. Two, understanding giving, and three, understanding energy itself. So, one, linear time uh, is something that we need to understand in order to effectuate progress. Because if we don't understand linear time and how it's reconciled into the infinite time, then we're going to start attaching our emotions to outcomes. And the, those outcomes, humans don't have a capability of understanding or knowing. So the outcomes that are going to occur today, Sean, have nothing to do with your behaviors today. Uh, or if they do, uh, you don't understand which ones do or know which ones do. And so the first thing was to understand time and to allow myself to do my best learned lessons and have fun within that time. And so for me, I used uh, that time to be productive every day, accessible to others, even if it was two, and to access what I want and uh, to be gracious. My goal always is to take every situation, outcome, consequence, coincidence, or result, and find the light in it, find the love in it, and find the lesson in it. Because if I find the light, the love, and the lesson, it will reduce and dissolve and dissipate all of the interference between me and the omniscient, all-powerful, unified, infinite time uh, that I coexist and co-create within. Uh, two was understanding giving. Uh, so if I was going to be productive, accessible, and gracious with my time, I could not combine the more I give, the more I receive. Because if I would show up to a meetup and one person would be there, or I'd post a live and two people would be there, or even worse, I'd do a speech and only two people would be there. If I thought the more I gave, the more I would receive, uh, instantly, then once again, I wouldn't be working within the context of linear time and infinite time. But two, I'd be cheating myself of the tools that I've been given. You see, there's two tools in understanding giving. And it's extremely important to understand within the context of the stage theory that says, 
I'm going to capture as much of my essence as I can. I will modify it over time to all the platforms that exist. I will utilize all that I'm given, not all that I'm receiving, in order to amplify my essence. And then I will feel worthy of receiving and receiving more. So for me, when I would stand in front of no one, I was giving 100%. But I immediately used gratitude, the ability to find the light, the love, and the lessons, and forgiveness to give me the patience and ease in order to facilitate the faith combined with the wisdom given to me by gratitude in order to create good progress. You see, good behavior creates good progress. It doesn't create good results instantaneously. It creates good progress instantaneously. So when I realized that the more I gave, the more I would be given, elevating my awareness to what I'm given through gratitude and effectuating all that I'm given by feeling worthy of it through forgiveness, which brought about the ease and amplification and perpetuation of that content. And so understanding linear time, understanding giving, and then finally understanding that energy has three characteristics. Number one, energy. And this is why I was so excited when I met you. You see, I gave on a TV show with Scott uh, in BR, way back, a radio show, other TV show now too, but uh, Scott and BR. And I elevate what I'm given from taking my time to be on that show. And you appeared in my life. And I was given an offer, hey, I would love to host your Friday trainings, which now, like you said, as an enormous amount of people, but back then it was in person, and we might get 30 to 50 people, but you offered, I was given food for everyone. Yeah. And through gratitude, I knew that you were someone that I attracted into my life. And therefore, I knew that I would attract more people like you. It would aggregate more and more. So maybe 20 people showed up to that first training and then 40, 80s, then 160. And now, like you said, millions of people watch my Friday trainings, either live or replay. Over 100,000 register for it live now. We couldn't fit that in my office, by the way, nor can I still even fit it in my office. <laughs> So you, can't, you can't fill it, fit it in, in, in Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. Yeah, I was going to say my office is SoFi <laughs> Stadium. So I, I, I have an office at SoFi. I can't even fit it in there. But it also accelerated. And what's so much fun is you talked about having wisdom through gratitude, but also faith through forgiveness that I see now, you know, you have surpassed the awareness. You have surpassed the giving. You, you now are in the exponentiality, aggregation, and acceleration that money and behaviors create in your life where it went from one to two to four to eight to 16. Now I need to work with you as I work with many on the greatest uh, time of coaching and mentoring and teaching, which is called the prioritization period. You see, if all I'm focusing in on is teaching you now how to align timing and risk tolerance to those that you work with through and chase align the timing and risk tolerance with those people by prioritizing what's important to you also by knowing who you can help who you can help and how to get that done and so taking you through the roadmap the framework of your history and mine uh which believe it or not has had exponential results with every single person that the only people that i work with that are not having the success that you and I have, aren't doing the work. They're not doing the work. And you have an Eastern European attitude. I have an Eastern European attitude. We believe in being first one in, last one to leave, doing our best, learning lessons and having fun. And there's a whole bunch of uh, people that they call themselves the extra milers. And uh, they're all around you there in San Diego. And they go the extra mile every once in a while and they continue to bullshit themselves. And then they use that to justify why they're not where they want to be. And they end up lying more to others, pretending like they're there. And you and I both know they're not there. Their businesses are spiraling. Their brands are not growing. They're paying to be on stages and stand in front of shit that they don't own or brag about shit that nobody gives a F about and pretends to care about. 
And, uh, you know, those are the people uh, to me that uh, people laugh at them, scoff at them and make fun of them like they do us, uh, but behind their back. And for us, we know people laugh at us, scoff at us and make fun of us. Those that love us because they don't understand us. But we know that they'll stop laughing, scoffing and making fun and they'll start applauding when they see we took them as Einstein taught us. We took them from, huh, barbecue media. to wow. All over the place. Barbecue media. That was Einstein's secret. Why he's the biggest brand in the world. And with the most solid brand in the world, you go anywhere in the world, no matter where you are. And you say, if I ask you who the biggest genius in the world was and is, who is it? They would say Einstein. The results are in National Restaurant Association show, Kyle and Sarah and myself. We were at the Davo sales tax booth and we were polling restaurant owners on the floor. This was a very unscientific poll, but the results are resounding. Restaurant owners do not like sales tax. Nobody likes sales tax. Doesn't matter what business owner you are, small business, big business, Davo automates the sales tax process. We are so grateful that Davo is the sponsor of this show. They automate sales tax at our Cali barbecue restaurants. It is $50 a month. It integrates with all the major point of sale partners, including Toast. So if you want to sleep at night, if you want to not worry about sales tax, Go to Davo, check them out, Davo Sales Tax. Uh, let us know how they're helping automate your sales tax in your restaurant so that we can share your Davo story on digital hospitality. Hey everyone, uh, Avi Gorin, CEO and co-founder of Marquee. And I wanna talk about the customer journey for a second. You never know as a restaurant owner where your guests are truly coming from. End of the day, we do see some patterns around two types of search behaviors direct versus discovery. Direct search, for an example, would be jumping into Google and saying Cali barbecue hours, right? I know where I want to go to eat, but I'm missing a key detail. I need a little bit more information. Discovery, which is the bulk of searches, is barbecue in San Diego, restaurants near me, takeout near me, right? One of the best ways to be found for more discovery searches is leveraging keywords. Reviews are basically free content for you to leverage. Think about keywords that are relevant to your brand, your location, and include as many of those in your review responses as possible, right? How can you go about doing this? Let's set up reports, utilize tools like Google Trends, find out what's going on in your area and how you can help leverage these keywords and review responses, because someone else is doing that, right? If you need some examples, you could do anything from including summer menu, gluten-free menu, um, leverage specific menu items like the dreaded and beloved spice pumpkin anything in your review responses, right? Let them know what's coming. Let your reviewers know something they should come back and try. And of course, if all of this just seems overwhelming and daunting because you're already running a, a restaurant and have enough on your plate, just leverage the team at Marquee to do this for you. We handle all of this. We're experts in this space. We can automate this. So it's just another item that you know you are taking care of. Again, that's marquee.com, M-A-R-Q-I-I, M-A-R-Q-I-I.com. No you. However, we did recently buy M-A-R-Q-U-I-I.com. So if you do misspell it, we got you. You'll still find us. We can still help you. Can you share what are the elements to create a successful show? Uh, so, you know, determinative upon what you mean by show, right? Let's go, it, let's go, let's go B to B business to business type of show. Yeah. So the key to having a successful show is connecting and having a communication charter in which you follow in order to bind with the decision makers in the B2B world. And so you want to bond with a communication charter with the B2B decision makers. That's the key to having a successful show. If you have a communication charter connection, a bond with the B2B decision maker, then other B2B decision makers will be attracted to your show. They also surround themselves in their neighborhood, as you know, my frequency is my neighborhood. And so you will have a bunch of B2B, C-level decision makers who are 
sell, buying from you and selling for you for life. The last thing you want is Gary V's following. That's the only reason Gary V has what we have is because he has so many followers, but right. you don't have to have 12 million followers, but he spends a lot more money because now he's not just catering, catering to like you and I, the B2B decision maker. He has to entertain the 19 year olds, the 14 year olds. He has to have, you know, 7,000 employees across the world to pretend uh, as if he's not going after the same people we are. Look, I'm trying to empower over a billion people, and I want those 19-year-olds and those 16-year-olds, but I'm going to get them by empowering you to empower those people that will empower those people. And it scales at a greater a greater level, allowing me to stay clear, balanced, and focused on building a show that bonds with, under a communication charter, to agree it upon timing and risk tolerance of a higher level of conversation to discuss and help and provide value by either giving those B2B decision makers more of what they like or taking away what those B2B decision makers don't like. I'd love to talk about fear. So one of the things when I talk to business executives about launching a show is they have fear of what is it going to look like because they don't want to be made fun of. They they think that once the content gets out there, it's not going to be the commercialized via commercialized version of what we see for Super Bowl. When when we think of content, we think of the Super Bowl commercial. I want it to, my business to look sexy. One of the answers that I teach people is that it's quantity, speed, and consistency that will eventually get you quality. It's not quality first. You know, we make our media the same way we make our barbecue. And that's, we made a lot of shitty barbecue in the beginning before we started making really good barbecue. For you, can you talk to quality of content? Absolutely. So the quality of your content is dictated by your intention of frequency. All content, in my opinion, is quality, determinative upon the alignment or the communication charter between the audience or frequency or neighborhood that you're trying to create that bond with, that connection with, the bond or community that you're trying to provide value to by giving more of what they like or taking away some if not all of what they don't like. And so the number one problem that most people have is they use judgment and separation in order to determine this is good content or this is bad content. All content will resonate automatically with 10% of the people that it comes upon. All content will be hated by 10% of the people that that content comes upon. It is the consistency and the clarity in, of that frequency, the strength of the signal, the breadth of the spectrum, and of course, the length of the uh, the power of the message uh, of how true it is, that will allow you to absorb the other 80%. And it, even if you have great spectrum, great power, uh, and great clarity of that message, if you're not consistent, you're not going to build that audience, that neighborhood of people that are going to buy from you and sell for you. And so it's extremely important to, you know, allow yourself to be you. I am not, this is what I want people to think I am because that will give you the widest spectrum, the clearest message and the most powerful signal. And so many people, especially on social media in that form of content, they are not living in. I am, they are not truly, communicating their skills, their knowledge of who and what, and their inspiration. But instead, they're reacting to the fear of what other people think, or what's missing, or what I don't want. And in that reaction, all they're doing is messing up the frequency of the essence. They're creating interference between the value that they're providing to others. And they're wondering why they still remain in the exact same place they were last February 10th. And so I encourage everyone to look inside to find what you want outside. The fears exist outside and inside. They exist in the past and the future, but it is our understanding of our essence and the consistency in which we communicate it and the charter that we create with the frequency and neighborhood that we have in order to facilitate that acceleration, that aggregation, and the compounding of the expansion of our community, neighborhood, and frequency.
when we when you look back on Super Bowl 58 your time at Radio Row give me one story that you will look fondly back on one lesson that you learned oh my goodness I you know it, it is the one that I learned from Lee Steinberg, as you know, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. Uh, the man who they made the movie Jerry Maguire about. And uh, I was blessed to run that company and partner with Warren Moon and build a global sports marketing company right next to it uh, for over a decade. And what I learned uh, was that sports is a backdrop from Lee and the movie Jerry Maguire because Jerry Maguire is a love story, but it used sports as a backdrop. And that I am so blessed, you know, this was my 35th Super Bowl. I am blessed to be part of the culture. And so I use the NFL, I use the Super Bowl, I use sports, whether it be the Pro Bowl, the Masters, the Kentucky Derby, the Breeders' Cup, the ESPYs, Emmys, Oscars, and Grammys. It doesn't matter. That was my backdrop. And what reminded me of that great lesson that sports is a backdrop providing everyone to utilize their skills, knowledge, and desire to build a neighborhood or frequency within that backdrop of an emotional attachment that people have because they love football. So I was there to give them more of what they love, but in a different way. So as I was with Rob Riggle, right? Riggle's picks. Yep. When I, the, my, my favorite one to illustrate this, it wasn't Austin Eckler. Right. It, it wasn't Sean Merriman or Marshall Falk. It wasn't Joe Montana. It, oh, oh, hold on one second. Uh, these people call me. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm it, milking it my time here, Dave. I'm going into overtime. Let's go. I, no, yeah, <laughs> that, that was my next coaching call. So uh, I got to finish this story, though. The number one person that, you know, we, we were in the Paramount and TikTok lounge, right? That I was hosting there. I was invited into this uh, the bounty uh, activation one day, so I was hosting there, and uh, I was also in a gambling at the very beginning. They gave me the center set at Radio Row, so three yeah. of the biggest activations. Oh, by the way, also XM Sirius and PXG uh, as well. Shout out to them. I'm going to be doing much, much more. So obviously, I'm in coach. I do Coach's Corner on uh, Sirius XM. I'm, tr I'm trying to get into the life side of it, the thought leadership, the entrepreneurial side. So right. uh, trying to be the biggest show on, on XM uh, and we're getting there. Now, listen, the number one person with the backdrop of sports, and I love this guy. It was almost Tony Orlando, who you don't know who he is. Tony no. Orlando and Don, he was with Sammy Davis Jr., Elvis, the Rat Pack. Um, really? He sang, he sang the song. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. Anyway, I thought it was going to be Tony uh, Tony Orlando because I know how the backdrop works, right? Yeah. Every you know you got a hundred hundred different football players, but you only have one Tony Orlando. But the rocker, the man who rock. Oh, Will I Am was there, by the way. I thought Will I Am might be my cultural leader yeah. of the stage theory, but no. It was Flavor Flav, baby. Come he on. He brought it down. <laughs> he brought it down. If you don't catch Dave Meltzer and Flavor Flav at the Super Bowl, if you don't uh, see that content, you are missing out. I was making my pitch to get him in the halftime show. <laughs> Flavor Flav was rocking with the clock, and uh, we no were way. not singing TikTok. That's right, baby. I am blessed. B L E S D. And I am right. forever consistently, persistently in the pursuit of my potential with Cali barbecue and my boy, Sean Walton. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Dave. Thank you. Enjoy the Super Bowl. That's it. Go chargers. Go Jim Harbaugh. It's a new era. Cali go barbecue is going to be bringing some, uh, some barbecue to Jim Harbaugh. You mark my words. I guarantee it. Thank you, Sean.